Jeff Jonas, data maven at IBM. You work for a big company, Jeff. No. And now you've got this theory of big data. You say there's too much data in the world, or perhaps not too much data, but there's more and more data, and we have less and less of an ability to understand it. But you seem a little bit of a data Einstein. You've come up with a, a, almost a theory of relativity when it comes to <laughs> big data. What does that mean? What is big data, and how is it a solution? Well, I start by saying this. I think the world, for the most part, has, uh, technology people have been building algorithms to study individual puzzle pieces. I did a blog post about this called Algorithms at Dead End. You can't squeeze knowledge out of a pixel. If I pull a puzzle piece out of the box and it has flames on it, what are you going to do with it? I mean, you have to call it fire. It's only after you take the puzzle piece to the puzzle do you realize it's in a fireplace. No big deal. So the kind of work that I'm doing with big data is how do you take a, a piece of data as it happens, which is like a puzzle piece. And but instead of trying to figure out whether it's good news or bad news, should you, should you give them the credit? Is this an identity theft situation because they're using their credit card? Instead of trying to make a decision around that atomic piece of data, you're taking that piece of data and you take it to the puzzle and you figure out where it belongs. And you see how it relates to the rest of the stuff the enterprise knows. Suddenly you have all this richness. Now the quality of the decisions you make are better. And there's some funny things that come from this where the more data you get, you get lower false positives and lower false negatives, which means better prediction. And it gets faster with more data. I've seen this. It was in, it was in I think it was in 2006. We had a system that had a lot of data in it, and we're feeding it and feeding it, and there was a point it started getting faster with more data. And this is so counterintuitive that, it could, that the, the future could be like that. Just to be clear, when you get a new piece of data, how many cycles of CPU does it take to figure out if it's good news or bad? I'm saying that as the data gets bigger, the amount of CPU cycles it takes to figure out if it's good news or bad gets cheaper and cheaper. So this is Jonas's <laughs> law rather than Moore's law of data. <laughs> well, that, I, that's mine. I, and I'm not saying. Well, yeah, I don't but know. You're saying I know what you're trying to start here, but. It, it, it <clears throat> speeds up. Yeah, and it speeds up on this principle I call context accumulation. It's about taking puzzle pieces to puzzles, and it works literally on the exact same principles. When you put a puzzle together at home, how come the last few pieces are as easy as the first few? You have more data in front of you than ever before. The most expensive piece when you put the puzzle together at home is when it puffs up and takes up the most space, it has the most ambiguity. But there comes a point where it begins to collapse, where pretty soon some of the chunks start to fall in. You get the edges. Huh? So you, in spite of, in spite of being nervous about data, ultimately you're an optimist. You think that big, big data could be the solution to the avalanche of data in today's electronic world. I think it's the only way forward. We have to go from puzzle pieces or pixels to pictures. Okay, so we've got, yeah. we got an entrepreneur watching this now. Yeah. And he's scratching his head and thinking, oh, the, the next big thing's big data. He doesn't really know what it is. What, what does someone do to un not only to understand this, but to take advantage of it as an entrepreneur and as an investor? I'll tell you what. There's more and more cloud services becoming available. Okay? Mm -hmm. There's companies like Simple Geo that are creating uh, cloud services around geographic data. And I think entrepreneurs that want to play with big data are probably going to have to partner with cloud services because you're not instantly going to go get 70 terabytes of data. Mm -hmm. Okay? But if I was an entrepreneur, I think there's a bunch of stuff you can do to, with data where you don't uh, have to just say, I need, I need a zillion rows of data to do better predictions. I think you can put things right on top of Foursquare. Somebody locally here that I know went out and made a voider, which is you know, using Foursquare to, to avoid others. There's going to be applications that, that turn up that, that when you go and search for something, it's going to take, and this is something like, I, you know, if I was out trying to dream stuff up, I'd be trying to build, um, ad engines that are so geospatially aware, they would do this thing that I call data finds data, relevance finds you. And what I mean by that is instead of having to look to see if there's traffic every day on this route, there's never traffic. So you stop looking. Well, I think there's ways to create applications with things that do traffic monitoring and, and on top of Foursquare, for example, or Facebook about where you are. And you're going to go somewhere because you go there every day at, at 3 p.m. But today, because of one of these analytics that the consumers opted into, it's going to say, hey, you don't want to go that way today. You want to go this way. There's been an accident or something. You're, it's going to take you two hours to get, to get there. And when that shows up like an SMS, it's not going to feel like spam. And you don't have to do big data and cloud compute to do that. You could build that kind of analytic uh, that guides a person. So the data finding the data says, hey, it figures out where you're going. And it figures out this traffic on the route. And then it sends you a, a thing. Maybe it's sponsored by, by you know, Chevron or, or mobile. And it says, hey, guess what? You should go this way. Does, IB, does IBM invest in these sorts of things? 
does it invest in, invest in which things? In, in these it, sorts of data startups. It builds the analytics that startups would have access to. 